So it's always a pleasure to work in the, the Azan Medical Center. We have a wonderful staff. Uh, and uh, uh, SG uh, <coughs> is a good friend, so he selects for me uh, a patient with a trifurcation and a bifurcation. Okay. So uh, maybe you can... Okay, I present our case. A 60-year-old man with a step angina was reported for second opinion from outside the hospital. Two years ago, his previous coronary angiogram showed significant stenosis and left main to proxy, but he just won medical treatment without PCI. Next. His current inspector is diabetes, and next. His echocardiogram is uh, normal average history function, and next. Um, I say it's just I say it's near normal I say, but left main is a significant stenosis in left main to proxy LAD, and next. And triplication at diagonal to LAD with LAD. So we today our plan is just the crossover to, to left hand. Oh, you're, it's your time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. So I let you think about this, uh, st the strategy of this case. Uh, what we have already done is uh, we have uh, selected seven French extra backup 3.5 guiding catheter. So remember that this patient is 60 years old, is diabetic. He had no disease of the right, but uh, relatively complex disease of uh, the LAD left man and trifurcation. Uh, so this is uh, the first view that we have done, as you can see. And then we have done the areo caudal view. Uh, so you can see clearly the disease extending from the, not from the ostium, but very close to the ostium from the left man up to this uh, trifurcation. So for the left man, it's a 110 bifurcation lesion. And for uh, the LED, it's a 1000 uh, trifurcation. So we have done IVUS, so we can show the IVUS. Maybe it will help to select the optimal strategy to the panel. OK, so this is the pullback from the LED. Did you see IVUS? Do you see, do you see IVUS? OK. OK. So you see that the LED is uh, 2.8, about 2.8. This is the trifurcation. There is some calcium, as you can see, but not too much. A lot of disease in this LED proximal to the trifurcation. <coughs> So it's a long lesion of the proximal LED. Mm -hmm. And now we are close to the left man. You see the amount of plaque that we have at this level. Now we have a, a bifurcation with a circ and a large left man, which is about uh, 4.5 millimeter. Okay. The ostium is not a uh, disease, so we, you will see it uh, very closely. See the amount of plaque that we have. Mm -hmm. And proximally, okay, we have a nice left man with very little disease. Mm -hmm. It's very large. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so what do what do you suggest? Antonio. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I think uh, there is a, I will go for with one stent uh, almost for sure. Mm. We really mm. try to minimize uh, uh, stenting of the circumflex. Uh, so uh, there is a little bit of mismatch between the left main and the LAD, but still, uh, I believe with meta stent you can uh, you can overcome. Uh, of course, you will utilize different balloons. Um, that's my my strategy. And uh, uh, in the LED diagonal, uh, can we see again the cranial uh, APO areo? Yeah, I'll uh, definitely provisional on the diagonal, and uh, uh, the question is, uh, where will you land with the stent? Uh, 
then uh, I still uh, try not to extend the stent too much. Uh, maybe write uh, the diagonal uh, bifurcation. I will not go beyond the diagonal. Okay. Okay, so I will show, show you what we have already done. So we have uh, 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 wired all vessels, so the circ, LED, diagonal, the two diagonal branches. Okay. And the plan is to use one stent, as you s said, from the LED to the left main. Mm -hmm. We have made some calculation and it's uh, about uh, 34, 35, so we select a 3.5 stent, okay. uh, 38 in length, and of course we will deploy the stent at very low pressure. So this is what we are doing now. We are positioning, positioning the stent in order to cover all the plaques. So now we have a stent a little bit in the LED, up to the lesion in the left main, and we deploy at 6 atmosphere, mm -hmm. and then increase to 7. And this is a result that we have with this low pressure deployment. Then we have done the proximal optimization technique mm -hmm. with a 3.5 semi-compliant. Mm -hmm. So just proximal to the carena, uh, we went to uh, uh, 10 atmosphere, then 14 more proximally, mm -hmm. and we went up to 16 mm -hmm. at the level of the left main. Okay. So this is uh, the initial result mm -hmm. in our codal view. So we, see, we can see that we have not lost any branches because we respect the fractal law. And now we'll uh, exchange wires. Okay, so this is uh, our codal. So you can see that there is some carina shifting in the diagonal branches. But the left main looks already okay. Uh, a little bit underdeployed, of course, because it's 4.5, not 3.5. So the plan now is to exchange wires. I'm not sure that we we'll do a, tra a tracing uh, inflation, but uh, we will open the strut, the, the young patient, and the diagonal branches are relatively large, so more than 2.0. Uh, yeah, yeah, I. I totally agree with, uh, with the strategy so far. Okay, so now I'm pulling back the wire from the LED. Any comments from the, in order from to the panel? Okay, so we exchange wires. The, uh, the LED distal to the diagonal is a little bit uh, under the diagonal. Because of classification. Need more dilation with high pressure. Mm. Yeah, of course, of course. So what what we want now is to protect the branches, so we not post dilate at high pressure without exchanging wires, in order to decrease the risk of uh, carina shifting. Okay, so now I'm removing the gel wire from the diagonal, and of course I take control with my left hand of the guiding catheter in order not to damage the stent in the left main. Okay, so this is not uh, the good one. Yeah. Okay, so now I have removed the gel, the first gel wire. And we'll uh, go back in the, in the LED. <coughs> This is the best way to avoid uh, going outside of the stand. So now this is the LED. And uh, 
Yeah. I think I can remove the gel wire in the diagonal branch and uh, rewire it. So again, I take control of the guide with the left hand. And you can see when I pull back the wire, uh, the guiding catheter is attracted. Okay. Okay, so now we'll uh, try to go in the, the other diagonal branch, not this one. Okay. Top, uh, make a test, yeah. Okay, so they are very close, huh? yeah, as you can see. Okay. So you see, thanks to the pot, it was very easy to uh, rewire these uh, two branches. So Antonio, what will be your strategy for these uh, branches? Should we open the strut toward the, the two branches? I not we'll necessarily use a 225 will, uh, non compliant. It is up eight. to you. I, I don't uh, usually I do it towards the circumflex, towards the diagonal. It depends. Uh, 2.25. Okay. I, I don't so make I agree a that it's for uh, the diagonal. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Because the patient is young, I prefer to open the strut. But uh, uh, it's fully uh, optional. I agree. We so have a 2.0 or 2.5. We have non-compliant. Compliant. Ah, non-compliant. Two point twenty-five. Ah, uh, two, two. Oh. Okay. So we we'll use. Uh, they have not uh, two twenty-five. So we we'll use two oh non-compliant balloon, just to open the strut. And. Uh, uh, a question: and When we'll you do, uh, kissing balloon inflation? Yeah. When you open the strut, uh, uh, you always. Uh, Inflate a balloon in the uh, in the main branch, or not necessarily. Yeah, I, I will. Uh, I will open the strut and do a kissing balloon inflation at okay. the same time. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think it's very important because uh, the risk is to uh, to have deformation of the stent in the main branch, and then the. It may, it may compromise the outcome in the main branch. Yes, I, I think everybody agrees. Okay. okay, so now I have a 2.0 non-compliant. What is the length, is it? 15, okay, so it's a long one. Usually I use very short one. Okay, so for this one, I think I will just open the thread, so make a test. Okay, okay, we can go to 14. And then we will do uh, a kissing be between the second diagonal and the LED. So for the LED, it's, uh, it's a small LED, huh? so we uh, or do we have two. 275. Okay. Inflation. Uh, yes, if you have. So, do you, do you have in the panel? Do you have any the other uh, options uh, for this kind of lesion? Seems that everybody is uh, in agreement yeah. with my strategy, so it's nice. <laughs> how, how, how do you I think, think about everybody seems to agree with what you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> how do you Thank think you. about a more simple strategy? It uh, means that uh, just uh, high pressure dilation of uh, LED from LED to left main and uh, see the angiography, and sometimes we 
do the FF of ah, side branch, okay. then if it the is okay, a little bit as yeah. it is, then the uh, kissing balloon inflation is. Yeah, I, I think it can be uh, an option. Uh, but in this particular patient, uh, I think uh, it's better to, uh, to open the strut. But I, I fully agree that we have no proof about that. Huh? So do we have a 275 um, for the other branch? Yes, yes, okay. Uh, what's the panel's opinion? Um, the side branch really is really the osteo or the carina shift. So was the choice of a kissing instead of an ordinary balloon using a DEB. We actually tend to now they use more DEB for the osteo side branch. So I think uh, the, the, we, sh we need a randomized study about that. Uh, today we have no, no data about uh, TAB in the side branch. There was no disease at the beginning, so I think my uh, plan is just to uh, okay, go to... Okay, 12 is okay. Uh, I think we really need a randomized study because we, it's feasible, but we don't know if it's uh, good for the patient mm -hmm. uh, or even better than the non-compliant balloon in the side branch. Okay, uh, off. Now we'll use uh, the 275. LED. So now we'll do the kiss between LED and diagonal. Because the objective of this kissing ball inflation is just to reposition the, the carina in the center, and that's all. So, uh, in order to have good rheology in the in the bifurcation. Okay. So now we have the 275. Make a test. Okay. I will pull back a little bit the, the other balloon. This is diagonal. Okay. Because we don't need to dilate uh, too much. Uh, <laughs> distally test. I think it's nice positioning. Good. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, start with the side branch, so diagonal. So in the bench, when you do a kissing ball inflation, you have better results in the bench. In the patient, we don't know. We have better results. Okay, inflate the, the other one. Ten. Ten. We have better results when we start by inflating Ten. the side branch. Then the man. Uh, you can go to yeah, 12, 12 it's okay. 12 and 12, 12 okay. 12. And then deflation at the same time. Same thing. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, <coughs> perfect. In, in, in Japan, we are now doing so what the, we can the bi do bifurcation stand uh, using an OCT guide. We can clearly demonstrate the position of the strut and the wire position by using a 3D reconstruction by OCT. We are not sure at the moment uh, we can control completely or not, but it's by chance sometimes because uh, the, the uh, link position may affect to the, the, the final result, but uh, uh, we are expecting some improvement of the bifurcation treatment. In this case, we are very lucky because uh, actually th there are uh, uh, two bifurcation in uh, left main LED and CX and also the, the LED to C uh, diagonal, but uh, we are very lucky because there are no disease in the, the branch, in the orifice of the branch CX and diagonal, uh, there are no disease in this case. So, uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, the, exactly. Yeah, and also uh, sometimes uh, the discussion of the bifurcation treatment is uh, focused on how to treat uh, the branch, but uh, I think that the main branch uh, condition is the most important to the, the prognosis. Therefore, how to uh, uh, obtain in the good result in main branch is the main issue. But uh, these uh, two big branch and diagonal is very important in this case. And uh, during follow-up, in my experience, if there are strut on the surface of the branch, 
sometimes okay. tissue grows and in the long term follow up. Therefore, uh, I think uh, we have to know the, in detail uh, by using 3D OCT, and it may give us uh, the, some information in the future. Okay, um, maybe we have yeah, to agree. see a, another room. We let you finish okay. uh, your work and come back to you uh, later on. Okay, thank so you Antonio, very much. Antonio, what we will do? Okay. Yes, T tell what you're going to do. We, we yeah, so we'll uh, do a pot at the level of the left man okay. and then uh, do a kiss between uh, LED and CERC. But we have already a good result in, uh, in both yeah, boxes. Yeah, it looks pretty good uh, already. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you okay. we'll come back you. to you in a while. Okay. Okay, okay uh, Antonio Colombo, can you hear me? Yes, so we can hear so you and we can see you very well. Okay, so, and uh, this is uh, my uh, third case, and uh, uh, I'm gonna show the, the share of the opinion with the discussant and moderate. Uh, this is a patient, is a very interesting patient. Uh, sometimes we can meet uh, our, uh, the clinic base. Okay, uh, uh, Dr. Joe, can you present the okay. patient background? Okay, hello. I want to introduce this case. Uh, this, uh, this male patient is 58 years old male patient, and he, uh, complained about uh, <coughs> ever chest pain and actually he uh, nine months ago he had a cabbage history uh, due to the multivessel disease at that time the anastomosis of lima to LRAD and lima to rj was performed and uh, uh, unfortunately uh, before the closing the chest wall the heartbeat was not came so the often cardiac massage was done at the time the lima to LRAD anastomosis was uh, uh, happened the tearing so the Revision was done, and uh, two days ago we took the angiogram. Angiogram showed the LAD was total occlusion, and uh, <coughs> proximal to mid RC was also total occluded, and the site of Lima 2 RC was showed the uh, uh, subtal occlusion, and the Lima 2 mid LAD also severe stenosis. At the time, uh, PCI at the proximal to distal RC was uh, performed. So, uh, if I'm going to summarize this patient, uh, 58, a relatively young uh, male, and uh, underwent uh, bypass surgery using two RIMMA. Uh, one is RIMMA 2 LAD, one is RIMMA 2 RCA. Initial coronary angiogram, right pot, uh, artery was the CTO, and LAD osteum was CTO. Just one sock artery is okay. So could you, could you show us first? The first one. Okay, so uh, uh, at the time of the bypass surgery, and the, the uh, bypass surgery was done, uh, our the most senior uh, the cardiac surgeon, Professor Jaewon Lee, and he had a lot of experience, thousand, more than 1,000, 2,000 experience uh, for bypass surgery. He's a master of master bypass surgery. So during the bypass surgery, and the uh, patient was a uh, heartbeat was arrested, and she did uh, open cardiac massage. At the time, there was some tearing of the rheuma to LED anastomosis site. She did uh, something revision. So after bypass surgery, and the patient one month later complained the minimal upper chest pain, and uh, and uh, aggravated the chest pain a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the resting chest pain, she complained, and at the time we checked the CT scan, and the CT scan showed competing flow, the LAD, uh, RCA, uh, RIMA to RCA part is not so good, and the uh, uh, professor, the cardiac surgeon Lee asked me, can you do something? So I said, okay, I can do everything, don't worry. So, okay, <laughs> next one. So uh, this is a uh, bypass surgery nine months ago, next one. Uh, okay, next one. So, and looking at the uh, coronary angio initial RCA view uh, was uh, the uh, native vessel was total occlusion. So, uh, uh, looking at the Lima uh, angiogram, it's not so good. And uh, she attached the distal Lima to the mid RCA part. So, distal is not so good. And next one. So, and we did uh, spend uh, two hours to penetrate the light CTO region, and uh, uh, three days ago, and we spent two hours, we opened the well, we put the long 
uh, the uh, drug eluding stand and the mid RCA was uh, totally opened well. And next one. So this is the left coronary system and the initially uh, arid ostium CTO, right was CTO, and the limma and uh, lima. So circle is okay. But the uh, uh, limma uh, coronary angiogram shows the NS thermosis part is very tight. Is looking at there is some energy change. NSTMOSIS part is very tight. Okay, next one. So, and uh, we uh, already evaluated IBUS. Okay, could you show us the IBUS? The uh, uh, LAD to RIMA? Okay, this is the distal part of the uh, mid distal LAD. So, and the uh, mid part uh, was uh, uh, 2.75. Here is the mid part of LAD. This is the anastomosis part. Okay, 지금 나왔나? Yeah. Here is the uh, limma anastomosis. The vessel is uh, not so big. So uh, there is some anastomosis that is very tight narrowing. And the angiogram, we, you can easily see the very tight uh, anastomosis stenosis of limma to LAD. Uh, so, and today, uh, via this live case demonstration, is uh, my uh, key message is uh, bypass surgery is not always good, sometimes bad. Is, uh, PCI can be sometimes good. So, any any question, the comment for audience? Any any comments, please? What would be the your uh, strategy? So, and uh, uh, I uh, totally evaluated IBUS and the distal part and the anastomosis part, and as shown in angiogram, is very tight. I'm going to do additional the PCI to the LED part. Okay, test over here. This is a, we put the uh, six French Lima caster, this guiding caster, okay, text. What size balloon did you choose? Okay. Okay, this is uh, 2.5. Okay, and you're ready? I'm going to take a look at it. Let's see if it's going to Okay, test. That's it. Let's take a look at it. Am I first? First, okay. in my experience, uh, this type of uh, ah. early dysnosis of uh, okay. Lima to LAD, uh, early stage of dysnosis, uh, easily uh, managed by plain uh, balloon angioplasty. Uh, in my experience, uh, this type of uh, lesion have no risk notice after balloon dilatation. Yeah, yeah, I remember even in the old times when we did not have uh, stents, uh, these were the lesions uh, that responded the best. But maybe, yeah, what about uh, after the angioplasty doing a drug eluting balloon? Oh, uh, okay. Maybe, maybe option. Oh, an option. But uh, the, let's see what the result after the dilatation. Okay. So the balloon expand pretty well. Okay, test. The part, how old the graft is? How old? This is uh, nine months. Nine Pastor? months. Or so, what is the reason why the early graft failure? Yeah, I think uh, so during the means, bypass uh, surgery, uh, uh, the cardiac surgeon mm -hmm. do some revision. It's during the you know uh, cardiac massage. There is some tear. Okay, test. Okay, good. So. Okay. Is it Test. Okay. 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 6A, 6A, 10, 12, 불러줘야지, 14, this is 2.5, okay, 
Okay, deplete. There is some kinking portion. Okay, go. Still is not uh, Six, eight, well expanded the balloon. Yeah. Yes. Ah. Okay, you deplete. You see uh, an indentation. Okay, okay. okay push up. Okay, it's a little bit much better. better. Angiographically. Yeah. We got 10 the curvature. Yeah. Uh, Alma 2.5 length. Is it? Alma good. So. This is how much? 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 So, Dr. Bao, this is Dr. Speaking. Yes. Dr. Bao, so you want yeah, to okay, put the stand on yeah. the, that's an anastomosis side? Yeah, I'm going to... Yeah, I, I'd like to put the stand and 24. Uh, 24 but I don't know. 24 and 18. Uh, who in the 24. panel uh, will not place a stand? Anybody or everybody mm -hmm. will place? So, just so, we do not have any enough data about the DEB, right? Yeah. In this case, yeah. I try to uh -uh. do the DEB yeah. inflation, right? You yeah. know, I think these okay. are rare so circumstances. We will never have a study. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. These are, you have to... Definitely. But definitely. If we put a stand, so uh, after balloon angioplasty, uh, at this moment, I'm, yeah. I'm going to check again the eyebrows right? again. So some people in the panel uh, may consider doing a drug coated balloon. Right. Um, uh, actually, I mean PCI's uh, imagination uh, things. Uh, 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 anyone in this situation will try to go a retrograde approach to this open up the, the native uh, LED, native, the left uh, main. LED basal. But I think the memory looks pretty good. Well, it looks good, but actually, good, unfortunately, yeah. they fail in nine months yeah. on both sides. That's what I worry about, actually. Uh, the surgical uh, result might not be as good or as long-lasting. Mm -hmm. Since you get a very good retrograde flow at this moment yeah. of time, and uh, with our, I mean, expertise That's in retrograde approach to this kind of situation, I just wonder, will anyone try to attempt to go back to open up the LAD later? with a retrograde approach okay, okay, okay. and uh, stand ah, okay. the left wing to the LED and that might be actually uh, okay. another alternative as I'm thinking about using my imagination to yeah. yeah. The plug in there. This is a possibility, but uh, nevertheless, I will give a chance to <laughs> see okay. stable result. If we have a recurrence that uh, okay. I believe uh, LED reopening uh, is okay. appropriate. Yeah, looking at the anastomosis part, could you show again the anast anastomosis part? Uh, okay, go. Uh, okay, is uh, uh, Rima is coming. This is uh, uh, anastomosis part <coughs> over here, and the, that is the distal ending of Rima. There is some uh, plaque, and uh, still remain the stenosis. Okay, and again, let's check it Okay, so and uh, on the basis of the IBUS and uh, I'm uh, select 2.5 and the distal part of size is not so big, just 2.5 and I select that this is a uh, drug loading stand Ultimaster at 2.5, 24 and then do as a the so you're gonna stand uh, it put the st one stand so some some panelists yeah. uh, the preferred uh, the drug looting uh, okay. uh, drug coated balloon so uh, but I, I think uh, yeah th there is another what good is, option but your, I think yeah. the mechanical mm -hmm. mechanical you know failure is a major mechanism of the anesthesia which is failure I think uh, much radial force is required to maintain the, such a patency okay Test. Akasaka uh, sensei worry about the jailing the 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 proximal LED. So we stand. Okay, Because uh, uh, yeah. in case we bypass graft, proximal side of the anastomosis, the uh, shear stress may decrease and the atherosclerosis okay. develop very rapidly, right? And if we put a stand here much more disturbance in the flow, in the proximal to the anastomosis. So, I, you know, my only concern is that condition. Right. Yeah.
Yeah. Angel ready? Anyway, he already put the yeah, stent. Yeah, you already put the stent. <laughs> okay. And of course, yeah. the result after you place the stent <laughs> is always <laughs> nice. <laughs> eh? uh. Anyway, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I think short result uh, stenting is better, right? But uh, mm -hmm. we are not sure yeah, that the long term result. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's a, uh, maybe old generation, I would have used a very short stent, like 12 millimeter, but, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think uh, people don't use any more <laughs> short stents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and uh, sometimes the, uh, yeah. in overall uh, proportion I of the pipe, uh, pipe has crept, crept uh, the we failure to, is not common. So, on. nice job, uh, the result looks, uh, looks really excellent. Uh, oh. Uh, we have to move okay. uh, to another room, so we say hello and uh, congratulations okay. for a yeah. very nice procedure. Okay. okay, thank you, thank you. We can move uh, to another room. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, uh, Antonio Colombo. Okay. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, this case is uh, uh, some educational cases uh, focused in uh, imaging. Okay, uh, let me introduce uh, the, our team, Professor Kang and uh, the Kang. Okay. The, uh, Dr. M. K. Uh, Hang is Let's introduce here with uh, the, me. these cases. Yes. yes. The patient is a 77 year old female, admitted for E40 in China. She has a risk factor of the hypertension and diabetes. She received Diometer 10 PCI with the near stent 3.0 and 3.5 separately and 20 years ago. We checked the coronary angiogram and coronary angiogram showed diffuse moderate stenosis at RCA but FFR negative and severe ISR at mid LAD. Next. Next. And echo showed the normal rejection fraction, but there was some regional wall motion of abnormality in LED territory. And next, and the RCA had done diffuse disease, but FFR negative. Next, and we decided to treat the mid LED instant stenosis. Please show us uh, the the angiographic appearance on our screening. Okay, the, in summary, 77 female patient, and the patient had uh, underwent uh, the Biometer stand 20 years ago, very long times ago, and actually she uh, suffered from pain, and uh, uh, as you see in the uh, angel's uh, graphic appearance, a uh, very diffuse narrowing in the mid area portion. So the, uh, our initial plan is uh, the imaging guided uh, treatment. This time, uh, I'd like to, to receive uh, this, some comment or question from the, the moderator or the, the panelist. Okay, so maybe let's hear what the panel uh, opinion. Yeah, by, by Angel, there, there uh, yes, I, I'm not sure that it is a stand or the calcification, right? It's in the combination, right? So it is important to know the... It, I think so. Yeah. Angiographic appearance is, uh, we are not clearly defined the, the presence of the calcium or not. Yeah, right. So right. Uh, inter, uh, coronary imaging gives you the, uh, much more information. Anyway, uh, we have to do the, the IVAS or OCT to identify the, the, uh, the pathology of the, uh, this uh, diffuse narrowing. But, uh, you know, I think uh, we, we see quite well, the, the stent looks well expanded. Ah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I so agree. it's, uh, I believe the mechanism is uh, mainly hyperplasia because yeah. the stent yeah. looks really well expanded. Yes. But, uh, in, in, in the tissue in, in stent or stenos, there are sometimes lots of calcium, right? At, at that time, it might be very difficult to treat. My, my question is how expanded okay. will it to treat the whole, I mean, that obvious ISR within two stands. However, I mean, if you look at actually the lesion tend to be more on the distal stand, which is 3.0, while the proximal 3.5 stand, the instant uh, ISR may not be as bad as it looks like. 
So I think after the iris, after you treat with the distal lesion, maybe you should do FFR to look at whether you need to treat the proximal as well at the same time or just restricting uh, the distal lesions only. So I think that's my question. Any other opinion? Can you show the uh, uh, AP caudal view to look at the proximal uh, LAD? Okay. We never. S okay, AP caudal. Any other opinion? So, you, you did already the initial yeah. study. Uh, tell us uh, what will be your strategy. Okay. Okay. Uh, first of all, check that the proximal stand with AP caudal view as you request. Okay, Angel. Proximal yeah. one is uh, not so severe. Main region okay. is a uh, demediated. Okay, so the okay the next step is uh, which imaging modality for the uh, this patient. So uh -huh. the uh, the the imaging in uh, ISL region is uh, the focus. One is uh, the size of the stent. Second one is uh, uh, characteristics of the neo in these cases. This is uh, the biometer stent. It's a uh, 20 years. <coughs> It's a very long history, so therefore uh, the possibility of a uh, uh, neo atherosclerosis is uh, quite higher. So uh, we do uh, the IBIS, uh, no, 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 OCT. We select uh, the OCT. Please show us uh, the uh, OCT images, Dr. Bang. We check the OCT from the distal edge of the stand. You can see that contrast was well filled, and here's the distal. Best cell that showed normal, they are normal. And here, because proximally, here is the just distal edge of the stem. From the distal edge of the stem, you see a lot of there was the shield. diffuse neo hyperplasia. And, and here, you can see well bordered. No, 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 no. Well, uh, well bordered calcification that has a very sharp border at 12 o'clock side let's see here right. stop you can see from 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock side there is eccentric very severe calcification inside the stem and next click 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 and here stop you can see the well bordered calcification with lunatic is uh, a crescentic shape at the 10 to uh, 2 o'clock next here, diffuse neo intima. Here, stop. And also at the four o'clock, there is some calcification. And if we move approximately, there's some diffuse lipid. Next, there's a diffuse lipid plaque. That means the neo atherosclerosis that has the lipid inside the stent. New, newly developed atherosclerosis inside the stent. If we move approximately, this move, is a typical yeah. appearance of the neo atherosclerosis. Repeat pool. Yes, repeat pool inside the stand here. You can see that the full of the repeat pool that make the risk of the distal nodal flow or the embolization risk higher in this case. And next, when you move proximally, there's a, again calcified the mixture of the in stand calcification and the Lipidic pool inside the stand. This is the very typical image of the long standing neo atherosclerosis. And uh, the OCT uh, measurement actually, the distal stand size is about uh, 2.9. So the, we uh, suppose that uh, the size of the stand in the 20 years ago is uh, the, uh, well expanded and about the uh, stand size maybe 275 or 3.0. <coughs> And uh, the, the OCT evaluation typically shows uh, the, uh, the typical appearance of neo atherosclerosis, including uh, the uh, repeat pool and uh, some severe calcification. So uh, based on uh, the uh, OCT images, we uh, uh, decide to uh, fix it, the dead lesion with uh, uh, the uh, balloon uh, dilation. Dr. Hong. So uh, we try to oh. the yes. Dr. Hong, 
Uh, based on the OCT finding, yes. I think uh, uh, it's very hard to dilate with the balloon. Uh, there is a need to um, some debulking such as rota. I think uh, rota is better than balloon. What size of the rota is uh, uh, there? Uh, uh, at least uh, uh, more cases. than two O. Well, two O. <coughs> yeah. Initially, well, yes. last step in the beginning is a two point O. Uh, Actually, first the patient one, is one a seventy five, and the next uh, two O two two point. Two uh, 2.25. Uh, uh, I would like to ask Antonio, since he's going to it. talk about the calcium, how are you going to deal with this calcium inside the stand <laughs> yourself? But I, I, I think, think there uh, is uh, some calcium, but it's not uh, severe. It is, mm -hmm. uh, seems to be quite, uh, quite localized. Uh, in our uh, lab, we will use a cutting balloon here. We will uh, stay inside the stain and so, go with Dr. That. Colombo's opinion is a cutting balloon. What about uh, the others, uh, the panelists, uh, the opinion? Oh, what about the uh, scoring balloon? Or the <laughs> 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 yeah, well, scoring balloon is not enough. Scoring balloon is a good option. Fine one, but, uh, cutting, but cutting balloon is a good option. However, scoring, is, scoring balloon is not enough to dilate sometimes. So you treat is okay, balloon so first, okay, then uh, we decide to the, the use uh, the uh, cutting balloon. But uh, initially, the uh, introduced uh, the cutting balloon yeah, is uh, not accessible uh, due yeah, to the, some tight so. uh, narrowing. So we dilate the region with a 2.0 and then to uh, the cutting balloon. Which what size, size of cutting the cutting balloon, balloon is uh, good for the this region? Yes, what, this which is size? a cutting balloon. Which size? 3.0. Trio. 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 Yes. And so what, what's uh, impossible? this one is that the uh, usual, usually uh, nomin not the nominal pressure. Nominal pressure is uh, six. 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 And uh, this one is at uh, the 10. Ten. Next. Okay. Let's see the result after cut. And more and more. Next. I think this is uh, the nice cutting result. balloon. And uh, from the. <coughs> yes. And then we do the another, the uh, OCT, after the cutting balloon with a 3O <coughs> up to the uh, distal is a 12 and the proximal is a 18. Uh, they show us uh, the uh, OCT image after the cutting balloon. This is the second round of the OCT after applying 3.0 cutting balloon up to 12 or 14 ATM. This here is the distal edge. You can see some dissection of the distal edge of the stand. Next, move on. And here's the distal edge. The lumen became bigger compared with the previous image. Yeah, the and you can, start, you can see some cutting of the neural cell especially in the 9 o'clock. Next, move on. The lumen became bigger. Here, stop. There is some limitation of the lumen, especially because of the instant calcification. Or you can see the calcification that was not dilated. Next, move on. There is some limitation of the lumen dilation because of the strong instant calcification. Here also, you can see the limitation. But overall, the result approximately we move. Uh, there is some minor dissection, but the lumen is well dilated. Here is the proximal edge of the stand. You can see some instant dissection, and let's move to proximally, and some limitation of the lumen dilation. Here is the most narrowest part of the whole distal stand. But the result, uh, so that the OCT evaluation, there is uh, some the edge dissection yes. to the, the distal to the distal margin of the stand and uh, the narrowest the lumen area within a stand after the cooling balloon is uh, 3.2 in the mid portion and the, when the, the angiographic appearance is uh, a little bit uh, the hazy in the mid portion of the uh, stand next next uh, the dissection seems to be so, quite and small, then we eh? yes and then oh, we are waiting for you uh, moderator and uh, and then check before that uh, we check it 
there is uh, some narrowing in the distal to the distal margin of it is uh, maybe caused by the, some edge uh, dissection in the, the second I... non of the, the OCT and the, the hemodynamic is uh, some, a little bit uh, unstable and the blood pressure was uh, done. We end your once again, next. Next. Still, you see there I is I would a, do a balloon uh, dilatation distal, by... distal to the stent uh, and see uh, what happened maybe with the 2.5 uh, semi-compliant balloon uh, and then consider uh, two uh, drug eluting balloons. But let's see, I would uh, okay. re-evaluate after a, having one done distal dilatation. Okay, <coughs> but the, uh, you know that there's some S elevation and there is uh, some dissection. I want to uh, solve it uh, immediately. So I deploy the uh, stand, it's a uh, uh, 2.524 synergy and then angiogram. And uh, to uh, fix it, the uh, distal H dissection and uh, now we are the next step is uh, how do we if, how do we fix the in the proximal part? Is so just the, uh, the ST elevation resolved? Or the ST elevation yes. resolved yes. after you place the stent? Yes. Okay. Yes, we are waiting for a more comfortable and the safe uh, situation. So we fix it and the distal part and the we are waiting for uh, what, what, what kind of treatment is uh, better for the proximal to the, uh, the proximal margin of the stent. So do you just think the DB uh, or... Yeah, do you think that the ST elevation was maybe caused also by some embolization? Uh, personally, I think it's a, it may be caused by the, some dissection and the flow compromise in the distal uh, LED. Embolization of the some particle may be the one of the, the uh, predisposing factor is a part of it. The main cause is uh, some uh, hemodynamic disturbance yeah, in the, the think, uh, distal LED I caused think the by distal the dissection. Is definitely a good idea. What, uh, what is your opinion of the panel uh, uh -huh. for the proximal part? Waiting for uh, the, each one is, uh, the, each one is uh, the, the acceptable, so the, the I'd like to the, the receive uh, the better opinion from so, the, the uh, moderator or There the is panels. one septal so branch the uh, that looks pretty compromised, eh? Dr. Wong. What is small septal? Mm -hmm. What about uh, the DCB option is a uh, proximal site of uh, the instant of stenosis? DCB. So, proximal part of stent is DCB. Uh, yeah. on, on OCT finding is well expanded and no major dissection. Yeah. So, maybe we can go to DCB. Okay. Rather than the <laughs> stand. I, I agree with the other. I the think the proximal the part is pretty good. Then. Yeah, if, if you try to put a stand, okay. you have to take take account uh, the diagonal branch, right? The bifurcation. You have to cross over, right? right? So it becomes much more complex. Yes. So if there are no dissection and that looks uh, very fine by OCT, so the the DB is the, the one of the option to treat the proximal side. Okay. I agree. It's more simple. Okay. Yeah. Any other opinion? That, uh, for uh, this. No, no other opinion. Well, I will, I will put this there. <laughs> okay. The we will agreement for the uh, to be DCB okay. and the proximal part 3030. Yeah. Okay, I think uh, we thank you for this very interesting case and we agree with all you did. We move uh, to another room and uh, congratulations for the thank nice you. job. Okay, Thierry, we are with you. Yes, Antonio, thank you. So we, uh, we have finished the case. Uh, you, maybe you remember what we have. Uh, we'll do the NGO first. Uh, oh, the, the NGO. Okay. Uh, so mm. you remember that we have deployed a stand from the LED to the left main, protecting the two diagonal branches, doing pot. And then we have done a kissing between LED and second diagonal, and we opened the strut toward the first diagonal. Then we uh, uh, have done a, a, a pot with a 4.5 balloon 
uh, at the level of the left man. And this is uh, a pot up to the proximal part of the stent. And now uh, I, went, I want to show you that sometimes you don't need to do uh, uh, OCT or OFDI to check that you are in the distal strut. So you see clearly that we are in the distal strut. So now we'll do a kissing balloon inflation with a 2.5 non-compliant balloon in the circ, very short one, and a 3.5 semi-compliant that we have already used before. So this is uh, the kiss at 12 atmosphere in both branches. Next. So this is the final result, which I think looks very good in the different views. Next. Uh, we have another one. Okay, and we have done a final uh, uh, IVUS. So I will show you the IVUS. So pull back from the LED, just distal to the stand. You see that we have a nice uh, uh, apposition of the stand, very circular. This is a bifurcation with uh, diagonal branches. And now we are in the, in the LED. You see that we have a diameter which is uh, uh, a little bit more three than three. More than three. Yeah. And then we will be uh, now close to the left main. And you will see the, the circ also. Uh, okay. Okay, the circ okay. is coming now. Coming. You see we have a very nice opening of the strut. So because we went through a distal strut, we have really... Uh, okay, so there is no strut in front of the circ. Okay, and then can you... Yeah, and then you can see the left main. Uh, at the distal part, it's a little bit less than 4 o. But uh, as you saw, the left main is a little bit conic. So, uh, in fact, uh, proximally, it's uh, close to 4.5. So, it was... And we use the 4.5 uh, balloon to, uh, to have a full deployment. Yeah, I think the result okay, is Okay, so excellent. thank you very much. It was uh, very nice job. Very thank good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Antonio. Thank you. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Colombo. Good so afternoon. This is John. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can good afternoon. hear you very well. Okay, could you introduce patient okay. history? Dr. Uh, Go? Yes, uh, this patient is 67 years old, now admitted to our staff, worsening effort chest pain, and his coronary risk factors were hypertension, diabetes, and he received a PCR from a uh, proximal mid LAD five years ago, and also he underwent the PCI for this RC two weeks ago. <laughs> coronary angiogram showed the severe stenosis at the left main, today's target region. And next, patient. The medical history contains diabetes and hypertension, and also the patient got the paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. Echo finding shows the uh, LV function is quite normal, and uh, RC territory showing the lesion wall motion abnormality, ejection fraction is 61. And next, this is a control angiography. RCA is well open, and next. Circumflex is a, a little bit diminutive, however, the quite diffuse and tight stenosis from the proximal to mid circumflex, and also the left main distal bifurcation showing the a very tight stenosis. And next, cranial, uh, cranial showing the uh, LED is uh, a mild stenosis, however, uh, also this uh, left main showing the uh, tight stenosis. And also the angle between the uh, circumflex and the uh, retina is quite a steep, almost a reverse angle. So, yeah. Professor Ann, please. Okay, could you show us the initial coronary angiogram? Okay. This is uh, the epicodal view. So we measure the FFR for left main to the LAD. Uh, uh, FFR is 0.75. Yes. And then the circum. Could you show us the cranial uh, spider view? So the circumflex osteum looks very tight. So do you have any comment? On, and then could you give us uh, some advice how to treat this patient? 
But uh, no, no question the, LA, the digital left main and the LED are critical. <coughs> I'd like to hear first the opinion of the panel regarding the circumflex. Because this diffuse disease is not a big vessel, long area. I already have my ideas, but I'd like to hear the other people first. Anyone in the panel wants to give an opinion? How about to refer to LCX this time? We didn't measure the circumflex FFR. Because the LAD is 0.75. Going to be positive, I have. Yeah. I think here the most difficult decision is for the circumflex. The LED is a clean shot, the left main and LED. Yes. But I tell you, my, what we will do in this uh, long diffuse disease uh, circumflex, uh, we will predilate. Uh, and be very open to do drug eluting balloon and avoid stenting, if possible, if the result is acceptable. But uh, it's, mm. it's up to you. you. You are the operator. Okay. But the problem is wiring. Can you see the angle of a circum a circumflex artery? Uh, Ramos branch here looks fine. So a very fine angulation, but uh, the circumflex, the osteum is uh, very angulated. Did you so wire now already? I'm very maybe already in the OM. Yeah, sometimes Ramos using uh, test please. a teleflex uh, pre-shaped uh, uh, catheters. Yes, but uh, we, don't <laughs> we don't have that catheter is not available in Korea nowadays. So the, this is a crusade double lumen catheter. Maybe I insert crusade. wire to the ramus. I think this a, is a soft wire. Sometimes uh, to see this difficult wiring uh, is uh, even more interesting than seeing stenting. There is a two angulation, left to main ang angle and circumflex angle. So wire is which not wire is that? Uh? Field XTR with a very soft wire. Yes. You need more curve with the, uh, yeah, I, maybe the I recommend the, uh, the dual lumen is orienting you in the in the opposite oh, direction. Yeah. What, what if you uh, inflate the balloon to the ramus just at the ostium of the surge, uh, blocking the entrance to the ramus and then facilitating the wire go to the circumference? Yeah, it could be one option. So I already make a very big angle, but the inside of artery angle of flattening. This catheter seems to have the, the opening facing the opposite side. I don't know if you yes, turn I think so. if you turn the dual lumen catheter. Well, I it's not a big one to uh, accept your big curve, so you need more smaller curve, small acute curve. I think it's better. Yeah. Yes. And we can uh, also try the which, angulator. Which one is the more important, uh, circumflex proper or uh, lamus sprint? I think both. Uh, both is good. <laughs> you don't want to lose any of those ranges. Yeah. Test, please. I think as a coil wire is better is a controllable. Yeah. I think if I fail, uh, I, I think wire. You must. Uh, uh, the dual the lumen catheter is not really helping you much. You must yeah. derivate the uh, side 
uh, guide wire more distally to the OM intermediate branch and uh, pull back uh, more curve needed to select this uh, LCX ostium. First, you uh, put uh, a side branch wire to the distal to the OM and uh, make more yeah. angle and pull back in and, and select the uh, side okay. branch. Okay, could you give me the, the BMW wire? I try to do very <laughs> conventional wire using the conventional wire. How, how about the reverse wire technique? Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I try to later. Okay. If I fail, all right. <laughs> I didn't expect it this situation. Uh, <laughs> so, I think it's better to go on your way. So, Dr. An, do you have the angulated microcapital in your lab? The super cross. So we have a lecture, so, yes. so after lecture we will be okay. back briefly, okay? Let's go on your procedure. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Okay, we let you work uh, in peace. So this is the uh, master's uh, keynote lecture from Antonio Colombo. Okay. His topic is hand down the secret of calcified lesion PCI. Please. Oh. Thank you very much. Uh, we already discussed yesterday some aspect on calcified lesions, so in many ways uh, maybe I'm going to repeat uh, some points, uh, but I try to show some different uh, cases. So first, uh, I want to start uh, with uh, uh, a typical uh, severe calcified lesion which gives uh, two problems. Uh, one, is, uh, is wiring, uh, sometimes uh, even if it's uh, uh, short, uh, the wiring can be very, very complex in calcific lesions because uh, uh, the wire does not take the shape uh, uh, that is uh, supposed to take. Uh, these, uh, we tried uh, several wires here, um, in some ways uh, similar to the situation we saw, maybe a little bit worse. Uh, and then uh, uh, we decided uh, uh, with very options, uh, we did the predilatation of the left main, uh, which is something very risky uh, and did not improve. Then we did a cutting balloon and we did a rotablation on the left main. Uh, again, no, no advantage. Uh, so at the end, the only solution was to, instead of following the regular path, to create another path behind the calcium and to re-enter immediately here. Uh, the Gaia is, uh, is a good solution, and then uh, we were in the, in the lumen. And of course, uh, uh, the calcium uh, needs to be taken care, and uh, we use uh, 
the shockwave both on the LED and uh, on the circumflex, uh, 3.75 uh, balloon. Uh, this is the result of the, the shockwave. Uh, here we don't see much calcium yet. Here is the calcium is fragmented, not a lot, but uh, sufficiently fragmented to allow uh, good stenting. And uh, here on the circumflex there is more calcium. Here you see the nice fragmentation here. Here there is a more, more, more calcium but the lumen is, uh, is, quite, uh, is quite large. So at the end, uh, uh, we did a uh, uh, crush on uh, both uh, branches uh, and uh, with, a, with a good uh, final result. I think uh, we can skip the ibus. Uh, and, uh, the, the. So I think, uh, uh, here demonstrates two points, uh, that the calcium uh, uh, creates difficulties. One is wiring, uh, and second uh, is the expansion of the stain. But if you use uh, a modern technology like uh, Gaia for wiring uh, and shockwave uh, to change the compliance of calcium, uh, you can get... Uh, you can get good, uh, very good result. Look uh, how wide uh, is the circumflex. Uh, you can only achieve this result if you have uh, done good lesion preparation. This is another uh, example uh, that highlight uh, the need uh, to improve the calcium. This, in my way, is more relevant. Uh, here you see a totally occluded RCA with an old stent occluded here. This procedure was done retrograde and was all subintimal. Uh, so this balloon is not expanding and is subintimal. Uh, back uh, into the lumen may be right only as the ostium. And here, if you don't break the calcium with some other tools, may be diff risky to go to very, very high pressure because you are subintimal uh, and uh, you may break the vessel. <coughs> so uh, this is a good area. You see that we are, we are all subintimal, but thanks God uh, the distal vessels are well, uh, well kept. And then uh, another application of the shockwave, uh, subintimal uh, breaking the calcium and uh, making a full inflation of the balloon uh, without going uh, to very, very high pressure, like 15 atmospheres, was uh, sufficient. And this uh, is the final result. Uh, all stented uh, from here to here was uh, all subintimal and back into the lumen as the cracks. But uh, if you can expand the calcium uh, with... Uh, Without a very high pressure, you make the procedure safer because if otherwise you may break uh, uh, completely the vessel. Um, another application of new technology is uh, instant restenosis. This is an instant restenosis uh, with uh, two layers of stents, uh, and uh, it's really. Uh, even uh, with high pressure, we were not able to get uh, an area larger than three square millimeter. Uh, the FFR was 82, which maybe is acceptable, but uh, I don't think for the proximal LED, leaving an area of uh, three square millimeter uh, is, uh, is acceptable. This patient is going to restenose again. So, uh, in this case, uh, uh, again, we utilize the shockwave inside the stent. The data are, are new. We don't have any, uh, any study, but uh, makes sense. And this is the, uh, after the shockwave, we got an area of six, uh, which is uh, about 
two times uh, uh, more uh, than uh, what we had uh, before. This is before shockwave, and this after shockwave. We go from three to six, uh, so it's a, it's an acceptable uh, result. Um, sometimes in calcific lesion, uh, we even use a semi-compliant balloon. Uh, we are used to use compliant balloon, uh, non-compliant balloon, because we have to break the calcium. But sometimes uh, uh, you may not be able to break the calcium, and you just want to have a fuller position. If you want fuller position and you cannot break the calcium, maybe a semi-compliant balloon is better because it allows you to expand the stent at least uh, where the calcium uh, is, not, uh, ex is not present. Uh, here you see a calcium, you cannot break this nodule, but at least uh, with the semi-compliant balloon, uh, you follow the morphology of the vessel and you can fully oppose uh, the stent. Uh, of course, it will be ideal if you can break this calcium, but sometimes uh, this <coughs> is not possible. So. Uh, I would not uh, take away from the armamentarium a semi-compliant balloon, which is uh, sometimes an option uh, to better expand, uh, expand the stent. This uh, is not a, a drawing, it's a real case. Uh, distal uh, left main, uh, eccentric calcific lesion, dilated uh, uh, with a non-compliant balloon, uh, post-dilated, uh, high pressure, 22 atmospheres, which looks a uh, uh, good uh, balloon expansion. The angiographic result uh, uh, looks uh, quite, uh, quite good. Nevertheless, uh, you see that there is a clear malaposition uh, in the proximal part of the left main. Uh, this malaposition is not due to calcium, uh, and uh, this type of malaposition can be easily corrected uh, by utilizing uh, a semi-compliant balloon at, uh, at high pressure. You don't see any difference by angiography, of course, but then uh, with uh, uh, inflation, a semi-compliant balloon at high pressure, you fully correct uh, the malaposition. So uh, sometimes, uh, even in calcific lesion, uh, the utilization of a semi-compliant balloon uh, is appropriate uh, to, better, to better expand the stent. And here are the, uh, the two, the two pictures. So I would say in calcific lesion, learn how to select uh, different solutions uh, and do not be always concentrated uh, on a uh, high pressure non compliant balloon. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Colombo. So, congratulations. So, how, did, uh, I, how did you manage? I will show you, <laughs> I will show you later. Not, I have to stabilize the wire position first. Uh, so they say that the time is finished, uh, but uh, before saying hello, we like to know how did you go in, uh, what kind of tricks did you use? <laughs> yeah, just, just a moment. Can we stay another two minutes? Okay. Sorry. No, no, no. This is a OM branch. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Dr. Han, uh, after stabilizing your yes. wire, uh, we must yeah. say hello to you. So you you you, you can just briefly uh, uh, explain how did you uh, put the okay. wire into yes. the circum? Yes, just a t okay? ten seconds, please. Ten seconds. <laughs> please give me the ten seconds, please. <laughs>
Ernesto. Okay, congratulations. Very nice. So? So which... Uh, <laughs> very good, very good. Okay. Now you can tell us. <laughs> okay. Very nice job. So some panel suggested me to the reverse wire technique. Uh, Akasaka so I use the, this is reverse wire technique. Yeah. So I make the band using mm -hmm. the crusade wire and retrieve the wire slowly. Mm -hmm. And then finally, finally, I can insert to the wire to the circumplex. This is actually this is the first live demonstration of reverse <laughs> reverse wire technique. And after so, can you do these? Uh, I change it. wire even without the crusade, or you really need the crusade? No, no, no. We really need a crusader. Okay. Because uh, we insert the wire, the after bend, uh, bend. Could you, I will, I will show you the where is the crusader, crusader catheter. Please give me the crusader catheter, and please crusade the catheter, please. And then please what one wire, any wire. Minus, minus. Yeah. We have two minutes. Yeah. I'd like to show you how yeah, I think it's nice to see. Did you bend, bend? Yeah. Can we get the camera how closer to, to your hands? Okay. So we have to insert the guide wire from the side hole. And put him back. Pack it, pack it, how I sit. And then we make the first curve like this. And then make the other curve. Jump to the page layer. Where is the wire? Just a moment. Like, can you see the, can you see the wire? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Can you see the wire? Yes. We Make can see band. the wire Kilo very well. The layer. Yes. And then, Make, G Make this G band. Shape. Yeah. And, yes and insert the wire. Not easy to show you. <laughs> <laughs> wire like this. Okay. Insert the wire like this. Yeah. Do you understand? Yes. 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 Thank so you. You keep, so uh, you yeah. keep. Uh, after insert the <laughs> wire to the, after insert the wire to previously, uh, to the, OM branch, and then remove the crusade catheter a little bit to the left to main, and then retrieve the wire to the main, and control the tip of the wire. Very elegant. Very. Elegant. Initially, it it goes to the OM branch, and then next, please, crusade catheter is too thick. The chain. I I like to change the. Uh, catheter to the caravel. Caravel is more soft. So using the caravel, I can insert the wire and wire stabilized. Please give me. Okay. Okay. Please can okay. okay. Thank you very much and congratulations for this very elegant uh, demonstration. <laughs> uh, we let you finish. Uh, we need to go to lucky. the to the other session. And you really need a, a bigger okay, thank you.
very nice.